My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hi, everyone. It's Candice Birmingham here from Admin Avenues. My leadership quote is by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And the quote is, a genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. With so much on your plate, wouldn't it be nice if ordering food for the office were easy and reliable? My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. With Easy Cater's network of over 100,000 restaurants nationwide, you'll have a huge variety of options near you for any group size, dietary need, or budget. Your food arrives on time, as ordered, all supported 24-7 by Easy Cater's team of experts. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hey friends, welcome to the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's episode 208. And you can check out the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 208, leaderassistant.com slash 208. And today I am speaking with Candice Burningham. Candice is on the other side of the world in Australia. Is that right, Candice? Indeed. Awesome. What part of Australia? Sydney. So we're missing out on the tennis, but we're enjoying the beautiful weather. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I, I really, that's on my bucket list to make it over there uh, yeah. someday. So hopefully, hopefully um, in the next few years, I can make that happen. But thank you so much for joining us. Um, looking at your uh, bio here, you're the founder of Admin Avenues and the executive support, uh, but you also have a pretty extensive career working in Australia and the UK as a C-suite executive assistant. And we'd love to dive into your professional journey. But first, what are some of your maybe hobbies or uh, if you have pets or kids or neither? <laughs> what's uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself personally. Yes, I have a office assistant slash influencer. She's a uh, cross Maltese Shih Tzu and her name's Millie. You will see her on our Instagram. <laughs> um, and my hobbies do include her uh, going for little walks with her and taking her to the doggy beach. And um, while I'm in Australia, because I live in London, but I've been in Australia for the past well, over a year now setting up the businesses. But um, while I'm here, it's enjoy the outdoors as much as I can. Um, looking at, I think it was four degrees in London today, so counting my lucky stars <laughs> that I can sit poolside and do my work here in Australia. Wow, that's great. And then what, uh, are you from Australia? Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. S- Sydney born and bred. Nice, awesome. Well, uh, how did you find out about the podcast? So I, you know, I typically connect with people on LinkedIn and such, but, you know, I, every once in a while I'll send out a call and say, Hey, who wants to be on the show? And, uh, I believe you reached out on one of those calls. So how did you find out about, uh, this whole podcast and maybe as a follow up, what's the biggest reason you wanted to be on the show? So I have been following you for a while um, and how I came across your profile was LinkedIn and then your book. So I bought your book first and I read that and I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. I thought um, it was a, a and followed up with the workbook as well. I just thought that was such a great idea to not only teach your teachings, but also to give a workbook that people can put it into practice and take notes and be able to utilize their thoughts and learnings from the book. So I've been following your journey and a big fan. So when the opportunity came up to actually chat with you on your podcast, I was like, absolutely, hand up. 
I definitely want to connect with you and your followers because we've got we we connect with the same industry. So um I've worked in admin for over 20 years in Australia and the UK, as you said. And so my network is also very global. Uh so um, you know, I do talking events in the UK, I'm doing practically perfect PA uh and the executive support um summit this year so global audiences as well so i'm like let's jump into america as well (laughs) yeah nice awesome well what kind of go back in time a little bit and tell us about your journey as an assistant how did you end up being an assistant um how did you what did you like about it you know how, how did you progress in your assistant career yeah so i fell into admin Um, I didn't do very well at school and everyone was going off to university and I was not uh, college for the Americans. Um, So I decided that I would go travel and see what I wanted to do with my life and to travel, you need money. (laughs) So I decided that I would apply for some reception roles because I thought I, I, I can meet and greet and I can answer the phones and I can do that kind of job so I got my first job as an office junior and receptionist and um, that was a tiny little architectural firm in Sydney I mean in Brisbane and then I found that I really really enjoyed it and really excelled in it and it was just small things like I found you know my passion for organization and my passion for organizing others and things like that that came out that I was like actually this is a really good job I think I could make a career out of this. And so as I grew throughout my admin career and was given opportunities, I grew from an office junior to an office manager to a PA to an EA to a business partner. It's funny, it wasn't till I was an EA that I realised it could be a career because everyone kept asking, what are you going to do after this? Right. And then eventually one day I was like, this is my career. This is a choice. This is my career. I'm really enjoying it and I feel like I'm going to go really far with it. And I did. I had the most incredible career. I think uh, my last two EA roles were to an incredible entrepreneur in the uh, UK named Kelly Hoppen. Um, and uh, some of you in the U- in the US will know her. Um, she's done a lot of celebrity homes. She's a celebrity interior designer, but she's also a um she what was she on um I can't think of what it's called where the entrepreneurs buy your idea product uh, you pitch the idea I can't think oh of yeah Shark Tank anyway, Shark yeah. Tank that's it yeah. um and she was yeah just an incredible entrepreneur author tv star you name it crazy I had a finger in every part and then the one before that was with another woman named Deborah Turnus who is the CEO of BBC News and she used to be the president of NBC Universal News so it's been a uh, it's been a wild ride, and I think those last two career EA roles were what made me realize, like, okay, I, I feel like I've hit my career pinnacle now, and I'm ready to give back. And so, um, yeah, that was kind of the journey. It just happened. It, it wasn't planned. It wasn't. I think I want to do this. So or, no one in my family did admin, so it was new as a career choice, but. Um, we're definitely paving the way so that the next generation knows that it is a career choice. Right. Yeah. Wow. So do you have any funny or crazy stories working for these people? I'm sure you do. And I'm sure you can't say it much about a lot of them, but I'm going to ask you anyway, because that's some pretty the, high, high profile executives yeah. I'm supporting. The one, that, the ones that aren't covered by the NDA. Um, I would say probably one of the funniest ones was uh, when I worked for an executive in TV. We were they were at uh, LA screenings, and for anyone who doesn't know, LA screenings is when everyone's pitching their TV shows and movies to TV companies, and they're buying and whatnot. Anyway, it's a massive party as well, um, so everyone's off doing everything. And this is back in the days when we didn't have iPhones; we had Blackberries. And so I couldn't find my boss and my boss couldn't find their car. And as you can imagine, it's like the Oscars, there's cars <laughs> everywhere. They're all black limousines. And so basically I had to text this granular photo of my boss on a Blackberry to the driver and say, go around and find him. <laughs> and he did, he found him, which was just incredible. And he got a great tip for, <laughs> wow. but that was probably one of my most stressful moments of like, how am I going to do this? 
Wow. Yeah, it's it's amazing the things that nowadays it's like, oh, you can just find your Yeah, you find can drop your a car pin. on an app or whatever. Yeah. 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 Wow. Cool. Well, tell us a little bit about your you've got a couple of organizations um that you've launched admin avenues and the executive support let's start with admin avenues um what was kind of the main reason you launched that and tell us a little bit about what what it is and what you do so admin avenues is australia's first and only uh premier employment website so it's a job board for only job uh, admin jobs and it's also a community for the admin community as we didn't have one in Australia. So we didn't have like a one-stop shop type website, um, which was really strange because when you think about it, like we're pro- what business aren't we in? We're probably one of the biggest industries in Australia, but we didn't have our own hub or our own place. We kind of just had each state and territory had like a community group. So we've created a national one uh, where everyone is welcome at every level. Uh, so the idea is that if, no matter when you come in, you can you can find people to connect with, you can find opportunities to grow in your career, you can find mentors, coaches, books like the uh, leader <laughs> and podcasts. Um, we've got everything. So it's all in one-stop shop. It's completely free for members. Uh, and the idea is that it's like it's it's a place for the Advent community in Australia. So we launched just last year in May, so we're we're very new, um, but we've had a really great response uh, to it. So that's been amazing. We've had huge growth, um, and the main thing is we we've just got the industry feeling good about themselves again and feeling like they matter. It's important. It's a career choice, and it's put us back on the map. So yeah, it's it's been a really great journey, and for me, it feels like I've been able to give back, which was something I really wanted to do. Uh, After I tapped out of being an EA, I was like, I really want to stay in the admin community. But uh, yeah, so that was Admin Avenues. Uh, And then the other one is the executive support, which kind of just came out of the air. Uh, Basically, some old bosses that were at CEO type level moved into chairman level um, type roles. And they just needed an EA for board, board meetings or travel or they just needed it really flexibly like when they need you they need you when they don't they don't and that kind of service didn't exist so we had some EAs that were semi-retired that were looking for exactly that and so we matched them and that's kind of what the service is it's just very high level for board type executives um, and with kind of semi-retired executive assistants that just want to work kind of part-time but with the the higher roles so yeah it just came about so yeah 2022 was a hectic year to start one business and then have another one tapped on (laughs) was a lot but it's great I'm really really proud of what we've achieved that's great so how does admin avenues when when you talk about the job board Yep. How does that work? Do you have to go find these jobs? Do the, do the companies come to you and say, hey, can you post this job on your board? Or how, is it integrated with a third-party tool? How does that work? Yeah. So all all of the above. So uh, with recruiters you and like companies like Deloitte's and big companies that have like a big high uh, engagement of admins, they usually use what's called an applicant tracking system. So it's like a job adder or I don't, I don't know, Itabu or Broadbean, Bullhorn type companies. I think they're all global. But um, so basically they use that as their CRM um, as well as their tracking of their applicants. So they use that, which is integrated with the board so they can track everything. Um, and so basically every job they come, they have, they can just click admin avenues and it ports it through to our website. Mm. So it's just as easy as one, two, three for them. Uh, for your bar and par that might want a receptionist for the dental surgery, a one-off job, they can just go in and implement it, type in all the details. Um, and, yeah, the the idea is is, is uh, it, feel free to have a look, www.adventavenues.com. You can see we've got jobs from all different areas, uh, you know, anything and everything in the admin get its scope is welcome there to advertise there. So, um yeah it's been great it's just been it's so much easier to be able to find employment but also uh 
our team actually goes in and matches people. So if we see people that want to um, are looking for help or they're, you know, new back new, new mums or people that have been out of the industry for a while, we do like a little session with them and talk about roles that we have that are available or recruiters that we think they might connect well with and just kind of help them a little bit on the side. And again, all free service, all just have that helping admins get back into their dream careers. Nice. Nice. So nice. How, what's maybe your your number one tip for those listening, assistants listening who are looking for work? What's the kind of top thing they should spend the most of their time on if they're looking for a new job? I think always keep your CV up to date. Always have it ready because you never know what kind of opportunities are going to come. The opportunities that came in my life were quick, fast and serendipitous. Like they were you have to meet this person, okay. And so I had to have it ready. So keep your CV up to date, always ready, always handy to be able to do that. But also keep your LinkedIn up to date. We're in a world of technology. If someone wants to Google you, that's the first thing that's going to come up is your LinkedIn. So make sure that your LinkedIn looks good, sounds good, sounds professional. Don't have silly stuff through it. Uh, it's, a, it's a professional network. Save your silly stuff for Facebook and things like that. But yeah, I, I just keep up to date, keep relevant, keep up to date with your um, skills as well. So make sure you're keeping up with technology. If you haven't done a course in a while, check out the providers that are offered. And there's so many free resources, like get amongst it, keep, just keep growing. And, but yeah, as my, my top tip is always stay organized and be prepared for what opportunity might come your way. And then what about just, Zooming out a little bit and thinking about the assistant administrator professional roles as a whole, what's maybe your best advice for a new assistant listening who maybe they've only, they've only been in the role for a few months, or maybe they're just about to start their first role, or maybe they've been an assistant for a couple of years, but now they're starting a brand new role at a different organization with a different title and, and all that. What's, what's some advice you could give to those listening? My advice is shoot your shot, take your opportunities wherever you can. So I was a receptionist and we had a uh, new chief operating officer that started in the firm and he needed an EA and I applied and he was like, you don't have any experience. You think you can just jump straight into C-suite? And I was like, yep. <laughs> and with that came absolute um what's the word ignorance uh I just assumed yeah I can do it like I've been really good out here of course I can be your assistant and with that ignorance also was that when there was uh meetings I came I sat at the table I didn't know that I was meant to be asked <laughs> and he <laughs> took that as initiative so he was like, great, come on in, listen, take notes. And that's how I grew in the role. And that's how I became such an amazing um, asset to the team because I was across everything because I was actually in there listening and learning and being able to give live updates. Like, no, actually, you're in Paris that week. No, we have an event that week. It was just so helpful. And they were like, wow, you know, this is actually really good to have the EA in the room. So shoot your shot. Um, my other thing is if you don't, if you don't hit every single thing on the list in a in a job, apply anyway. Like mm. it's something that females especially do where they're like, oh, but I don't know how to do that. So what? Apply anyway. You, they may be able to teach you. They may be able to do it during handover, but don't ever not take your shot because you think of one or two things that you might not be able to do. You'd be surprised what what people will be willing to teach you on the job. So, yeah, i just jump in there and, and give it your best shot. Wow, that's great advice. Thank you for sharing. Um, maybe one other one other advice ask that I would like to to hear your input on. Working with high net worth individuals or even just high profile individuals, what's what's a tip for those working in that that world? or that won't even want to work in that world. <laughs> you need to be reliable and you need to be flexible. These people are so busy and so in demand and their lifestyle and their work changes all the time. So 
you need to be reliable to answer the phone and you need to be flexible to make sure that that diary is playing Tetris every seven minutes of trying to navigate how to get them from, you know, from Paris to Germany and it, there's no flights, so you have to look at the buses and the trains and they're not going to like that, but you've got to get them there and, you know, being mindful that they have families, that they might want to see their families. So making sure that their schedule allows for that making sure that you know when birthdays are so that they can actually be home for those kind of things. Um, be in their world, be across everything, sit in meetings, sit in calls, be involved with their PR managers, be involved in everything because you are they are so heavily reliant on you as their right arm to, they, in their head, they're like, I have to focus on this, so you have to focus on that. And these are very high hi what is the word um their brains are just going and they're usually creatives so they're just da -da 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 -da. like my last boss kelly hopham was a creative but she was also dyslexic so i had to think of ways to make it easier for her to consume the information because she wasn't going to look at this an excel spreadsheet and be like great but so i had to do like a little powerpoint and be like this is this this is this and this is how it makes sense so that's also a good tip is make sure you're working what works well for your executive, not what works well for you. Right. You can then go back and do your own notes, but just make sure that you, my main thing is be reliable. You're there to assist. You're there to make their life easier. Be reliable. Yeah, that's great. Well, Candice, thank you so much for sharing your tips. It's been great chatting with you. Um, how can people reach out if they want to learn more about you, admin avenues, executive support? Um, what's the best way for them to, yeah, get in, get in we're, touch? Yep, we're on all the mediums. So if you want to connect with me particularly, LinkedIn is always the best. And because I'm an EA, I am programmed to respond. <laughs> so if ever you have a question or anything, please just shoot me any, a message. Um, and then obviously the website's. Uh, and social media is where at uh, admin avenues and at the executive support on all channels. So um, please reach out if I can ever help you. If you're ever in Australia or you need some advice in the UK, um, hit me up. I'm more than happy to connect you with who I know. I'm more than happy to provide advice. Anything I can do, let me know. And when you're coming to Australia, let us know. We can put on a big party for you. <laughs> I I would love to. I, I can't wait to go to the We'd other side of the world. We'd love to have you. <laughs> well, thank you so much again. And I will put all of those links in the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 208. Leaderassistant.com slash 208. And everyone can connect to all of the things Uh in the show notes. So Perfect. yeah, thanks again and hope you have a good one and hope we Thank get to you. meet in Australia someday. Yes, and, uh, please bring the boys. Uh, yes, that would be a blast. So best of luck to you. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you, everyone. Please review on Apple Podcasts. GoBullows.com